get ready to win an election, is that right? We want to say to the rest of the country, welcome to the new Georgia, welcome to the blue Georgia. Georgia, they didn't see you coming. But here we are. And here she is in just a little while, Madam Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. I like the sound of that. You flip this state blue. And come January 5th, when you send me and John Ossoff to the United States Senate, we're going to seal the deal. So make sure that we keep this momentum going all the way to January 5th. Don't let up for one bit. January 5th is election day, but let me tell you, we should no longer be talking about election day. There's no such thing. It's election season. We can't wait until, until January 5th. Anything could happen. Ice storm in Georgia, you know we're in trouble. And so start voting now. During this early voting period that goes through December 31st, Make voting part of your holiday plan. Don't wait. There's too much at stake. Because the four most powerful words ever uttered in a democracy are the people have spoken. And on November 3rd, you spoke loud and clear. And you sent Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House with Georgia's 16 electoral votes. We know they won because we counted them. <laughs> and then we counted them again. And then we counted them again. Can there be any doubt that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the president and vice president-elect of the United States of America? But they will need help. And that's what this moment is all about. That you would send John Ossoff and myself, that you would give us the great honor of representing the people of the greatest state in the union, the state of Georgia, the home state of Martin Luther King, Jr., in whose pulpit I'm honored to preach from every Sunday as pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, spiritual home of Dr. King and the great John Lewis, who would be telling us right now, vote like you've never voted before. And I'm honored just to be a part of this effort. I really am. Because no matter whatever I've been able to achieve, I I've never forgotten where I came from. I was raised in public housing. One of 12 children in my family, I'm number 11. 12 kids, my folks are preachers and they clearly read the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. I'm the first graduate of a four-year institution in my family. Morehouse College. I got there through hard work, grit, and determination. But I got there because somebody gave me some Pell Grants and some low-interest student loans. And I'm running because it's harder now for kids growing up in struggling families than it was for me all of those years ago. But when you look at me, you see an iteration and an example of the American story. Because I grew up in public housing. My 
my mama's from way across Georgia. That's way across Georgia. She grew up in the, in the 1950s, and as a black teenager, she spent many summers picking somebody else's cotton. She spent many days picking somebody else's tobacco. But the other day, those 82-year-old hands that used to pick somebody else's cotton picked her youngest son to be a next United States Senator from the great state of Georgia. And that's what I like about America. I love America because it is a great country that gives us the path to make it greater. And the way we make it greater is for the people to stand up. We're the only ones who can. This is our democracy. It doesn't belong to the politicians. It belongs to the people they serve at our pleasure. And so I'm deeply honored. The stakes of this election cannot be overstated. We've got to pass COVID-19 relief. We've got to make sure that workers are at the center of any relief that we provide. We've got to protect ordinary people. We've got to look out for our frontline workers, for our health care workers, for our police officers and our fire men and fire women. We've got to look out for those who put it all on the line for us, who risk their lives by saving lives every day. We've got to get this vaccine distributed safely and efficiently. We've got to make sure that communities of color and other marginalized communities don't find themselves at the back of the line. essential workers. Isn't it interesting? The folk that we have too often ignored, refuse to pay a livable wage. This pandemic has reminded us of how important they really are. The folk who stock grocery store shelves in the middle of the night while many of us are asleep. The folk who keep the economy humming, we now call them essential workers. Well, if they are essential workers, and indeed they are, we ought to pay them an essential wage, provide for them essential benefits. It's only right. And we have to strengthen the Affordable Health Care Act. And make sure we cover everybody. I believe that health care is a human right. And it is certainly something that the wealthiest nation on the planet can and ought to provide for all of its citizens. We can do it. We just have to commit to doing it. I've been moving all across this state, dropping by little towns. And when I go into these small rural towns, they're surprised that I'm there. I'm surprised that they're surprised. They say, Reverend, we're not used to someone running for the Senate coming by our little town. And that's strange to me because I'm running to be a United States Senator for the whole state of Georgia. And too many of our rural areas have been devastated. We've had nine hospitals closed in this state in 10 years because we've refused to expand Medicaid. Georgia deserves a United States Senator or two United States Senators who believe that health care is a human right, who will strengthen the Affordable Care Act instead of trying to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, and who will make sure that people with pre-existing conditions can never be denied coverage from health insurance companies. Georgia deserves a United States Senator who understands that when kids come out of school, they should not be so burdened with college debt that they have a mortgage before they have a mortgage. And then we've got to invest in this country through infrastructure investments that will create 
broadband in these rural areas, repair our roads and our bridges and our broken infrastructure because our broken infrastructure is a reflection of our broken politics and we must rise up in this defining moment in America and repair our roads and bridges, repair our democracy for the sake of the people. And we can do it. The only way to do it is to stand together. So push hard now in these remaining couple of weeks and push back against the forces that try to divide us. H have you noticed? I'm trying to have a substantive debate about the people of Georgia and my opponent is trying to reduce this race to the kind of empty schoolyard insults made between children who aren't thinking very carefully on a playground. This is serious business and she's busy calling me names. I'm trying to have a debate and she's engaged in name calling. That's all right, as we say in the South, bless her heart. She, she can call me whatever she wants. Here's what I believe. I, I believe that health care is a human right. We can provide it in the richest nation on the planet. I believe that seniors should not have to choose between buying food and buying prescription drugs. And I believe that people who work hard every day deserve a livable wage. She can call that whatever she wants. I call it common sense. And so here's the thing. I know it's dark, but we can get through this together. We the people can do it. That, that is the covenant we have with one another as an American people. We, the people, who are we? We, we are those who work hard every day and can barely get by. We, the people, we who work hard because we have heart but we don't have health care. We, the people. We who work to make others rich, but we can barely make the rent. We the people. We who are trying to struggle and make our way through college and technical school and vocational school so we can contribute to the great American democracy. We the people. We who, we, we who are doing okay economically. But deep in our heart, we know that something is amiss, that something is wrong, and that it needs to be repaired. And we, the people, are the ones who can fix it in this defining moment in American history. My, my, my dad used to wake me up every morning as I close, and nobody believes a Baptist preacher when he says, as I close. They say Rev's got at least two or three more closes, but I'm, honestly, as I close, my dad used to wake me up every morning because he had a serious work ethic. He was a veteran. He learned early to wake up early and get started. He was a pastor and he was a small businessman. He had things to handle. And so he, it didn't matter to him whether it was a school day or summertime or Saturday. He woke me up seven days a week, often at dawn. And he had a way of saying, son, get up, get dressed, put your shoes on, get ready. He didn't think you should sleep late or you should walk around, you know, unprepared. And so he said, get up, get dressed, put your shoes on. Get ready. And you know, I was, I was a little boy, and so I, I asked him, Dad, it's Saturday. And you know, I'm, I'm seven, ten years old. Get ready for what? 
And sometimes I stump him. He said, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that out later. You just be ready. Put your shoes on, son. He'd wake me up at dawn. And the thing about dawn is that it's morning, but it's still dark. It's dark, but morning is on the way. So I want to say to you, Columbus, Georgia, I want to say to you, America, that I know it's dark, but morning is on the way. And weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Are you ready to win this election? Get up. Get dressed. Put your shoes on. Get ready. Call everybody you know. Tell them it's time to vote like we've never voted before. Get up. Get dressed. Put your shoes on. Get ready. Until we have affordable health care, until we have a livable wage, let's fight together. Let's struggle together. Let's stay together. Let's pray together. Let's march together. And together we win. God bless you.